The first time I met Dr. Erst, I was four or five years old, and it was the first time I'd gone to get my eyes checked when I first went there. I was still pretty young and pretty uncomfortable with letters. <laughs> I didn't read until I was in grade three. I was more interested in, in going outside and playing in dirt and siblings would make fun of the fact that I couldn't read. So I was like really, really nervous because they'd always made fun of me. I was like, oh, what if I don't get it right? So instead of showing me those to test my eyes, he showed images of farm animals and he just did stuff like that that was like considerate and just like, he was just a nice, a nice man. And um, in London, he's a good su supporter of the art community, and we always have these like great conversations. And the last time I was there, I brought up that I was traveling, and then Dr. S, he's mentioned before when he was finally going to retire, he wanted to travel. And then he mentioned that he wanted to try painting because he'd never painted before. He loves art and he loves looking at it, so he thought, well, why don't I try it? And then I asked him, like, well, what would you paint if you were to paint something? He told me about this idea that he, he wanted to get a canvas and he was talking about just a landscape, this like cottage in a forest. He's a very modest man and so he wanted it a smaller, modest place. And he also mentioned gardening and how he'd have his garden. It just, it just sounded like he was almost describing the place where he would want to retire to. And like he'd go there and he'd paint this. He was clearly over the re retirement age. He just loved to do his job, let people see. <laughs> the last time I went back, I was talking with Henry. And I heard that he had passed away, and uh, he said like, "Yeah, whenever you're doing your art, just like, like think of John." And then I, I told him about how he wanted to make the painting, and then I said, "Yeah, I think that I think that I'm gonna." I'll, I'll paint it kind of for him, but like with his hand, so to speak, just kind of to paint the place where he wanted to go. I, later, I decided I was going to kind of put him happily in the cottage. I know that he would have painted it in a way that's more structured and he would have spent like a long time, like months on it, to get it exact and nice, like his lenses. <laughs> I know my style is very different from what he would have done, but I think that the idea and the, um, the feeling is there. I added a few things that I was thinking about when I was like thinking about him and his life. So I decided to add in a couple of animals just as that memory of, um, of the first interaction. Another thing that I wanted to add into the painting was the atmospheric from the sun because the first time I had an eye appointment with Dr. Harris, um, that was around the same time that my great-grandmother died. Her death really affected me in that way. I just remember being a, a kid, going out for recess, and I like was standing in the yard. All the other kids were running around, playing, whatever. I was battling with this, like, is she like, totally gone? And I just stood there and looked up at the sun and just kind of saw it as like a part of her became the sun because the sun keeps going and a, a bit of her must have kept going as well. I think um, the same with Dr. Eris, like he, he isn't completely gone, there's still some energy there and that's why I like to portray light from the sun. It's shining on, on him and, and his garden and the place where I think that he would be happy to see himself in this painting that he imagined.